Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, this is another one about Docker. I've done a few videos about Docker before. I will try and link those in the description. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about multi-stage builds. Uh, now what a multi-stage build is it allows you to build a final image in stages uh, and copy files between them. This usually means having a builder base stage and then a final stage at the end and copying uh, build artifacts out of the earlier stages into the final stages, mostly to save disk space and image size. Uh, now, disk space and image size usually means that you know, when you go to upload the image and use it later, you'll reduce bandwidth and you'll improve your startup time. I personally don't use multi-stage builds all that often. We'll talk about that later, uh, as well as some stuff that has made this a little bit better, uh, maybe to the point where I'll use them, but honestly, most of the time you don't need them. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so I'm going to build a simple Docker file that builds a small little C file just to demonstrate this. Uh, I don't know, standard io dot h int main. I don't know. We'll just do hello world. Hello, hello world. Zero, and we've got our little C file. And now let's make a Docker file to build that. Um, event to jammy, and this is just going to be a normal single stage build just to demonstrate this. Uh, get updates, Debian frontend non interactive app get install y. Can you tell I've written this a lot of times? <laughs> uh, we're gonna install GCC. I also know that we need libc6 dev, otherwise, we can't get standard IO. App get clean, rm rfr lib apps, list slash start. Okay, we have installed the compiler tool chain. Now we need to copy our file into our Docker image, and then we need to run GCC. Uh, let's actually just put it in user bin directly. That way we can run it directly. Um, I actually probably should put it in user local bin. That would be the right thing to do. Okay, <laughs> so this should build our, our uh, thing here. If we were to uh, do Docker images, we should see, oops, where's, I wanted to see Jammy. Okay, so Jammy starts with 72 megabytes. And if we were to build this image, uh, docker build dash t image dot, uh, we will have to wait through all of installing the compiler tool chain. Uh, but you'll, you'll notice just from the structure of this Docker file that we have a little binary at the end uh, but we also have this big bulky compiler tool chain that's also stored in our image. And this probably adds, I don't know, I would imagine you know, maybe 100 megabytes, somewhere around there, uh, to our teeny tiny 70 megabyte image, uh, which you know, <laughs> balloons it a bit, makes it bigger than it needs to be. And uh, you probably don't want to have to copy around a million copies of GCC to all of your production machines. So this image is slightly less ideal than it could be, and we'll use multi-stage images to reduce that. Oh my goodness, I suck at writing C, and I forgot a semicolon. <laughs> Fortunately, that layer should be cached, so it shouldn't matter. OK, cool. So now if we were to docker run rmti image bash, we can run hello, hello world, and it prints us. OK, cool. We have an image here. Um. But if we look at our image size here, we've created we've created a 221 megabyte image. So we've we've essentially added 150 megabytes on top of the base image just to compile a teeny tiny hello world program. And in fact, if we look at the size of that program, uh, that program itself is only 12k. So we have essentially 150 megabytes of overhead here. Now we can get around this by making a multi-stage image. And the way you do that is you adjust your from lines uh, by adding a name at the end of them. This is the stage name. So in this case, we have created the first stage called the builder. And we will add another stage at the end that is conventionally called final. I think you can actually call it whatever you want. Uh, but I usually stick to final. I think this is the automatic name that if you just build the image, this is what the one that will like this. Uh, so now we have two stages, and we can actually copy this little executable from this previous stage into the final stage. You can do that by doing copy from equals uh, from equals builder uh, 
and you should be able to copy it to the same location. So this allows you to copy from a previous stage while avoiding this compiler toolchain and just having a nice little slim final image here. And if we were to run the build again, uh, you'll see that our image our image is now back to only being 71.8 megabytes. And if we run that image, uh, and we run hello, hello world, you'll see that it still works. Cool, all is, all is fine and good. Now there are a few caveats to this and a few things that it's really easy to screw up here. Uh, the first is you'll notice that I used the same image for all of my stages. You technically can use whatever uh, image that you want here. So you could imagine using, I don't know, focal. Let's go somewhere really old, like precise, so I could show you why this breaks. Although that probably also works still. Build. Oh, we gotta download precise, <laughs> of course. Uh, I usually recommend ma matching all of the images in all of your um, multi-stages, just because, oh, let's just run this directly. Hello, hello world. Yeah, because, if you, wait, why is it, why is it building arm? <laughs> wait, what, what happened to you? <coughs> uh, okay, so something really weird happened here. Uh, basically, the reason you want to match them all is because if you get a mismatch, you get a bunch of really strange error messages, like Ryan, Ryan, trying to run Arch for some reason, which makes no sense to me because I am on a x86-64 machine. Uh, but usually you want to match these. Now there is one exception to this rule, and even this exception to this rule, I don't like to do myself, uh, which is if you're building a completely statically linked binary. I'm not building a statically linked binary here, but you can imagine if you're writing a tool in like Go or whatever other languages that support static linking. I mean, GCC does as well, but I just haven't done it here. Um, if you're building a completely isolated static link, statically linked binary, sometimes you will use from scratch as your final image. Scratch is a completely empty image. Well, it's mostly empty. I think it still has a few little things in it, um, but it's it's essentially a zero byte image. And this would allow you to create a, a, a Docker image that just contains your one little executable, which is the absolute smallest that it could be. I personally don't like using Scratch as an image just because it makes it really difficult to debug the con the contents of a container. Uh, if you were to exec into a container that's from scratch, you won't have a shell, you won't have you know ls, you won't have cp, you'll have nothing. Uh, it'll just be the little binary that you're trying to ship. So I, I tend to avoid Scratch personally, uh, but it is useful if you want the absolute smallest possible image that you can have. Um, but yeah, I recommend matching these as closely as possible. The other thing that can happen is if your binary depends on something that's only in your builder image, you'll need to make sure that the runtime equivalent is available in your final image. Uh, so like you might imagine if I added UUID dev here. Oh, I don't think that's the package. Uh, uh, I don't have the dev headers installed. Anyway, there there is a UUID, this might be the, the difference between these two, I don't know. Uh, there is a UUID, oh, I guess I should use app cache. It, yeah, okay. So you might imagine installing the UUID headers inside of here, uh, but you'll wanna make sure that you have UUID available at runtime. Actually, that's a bad example because it's definitely available at runtime. Let's use libssl dash dev. So you can imagine uh, you would install the dev headers for OpenSSL, you would build a binary that li that dynamically links libssl, uh, and then you go to this final image and it can't find SSL because the default scratch image doesn't contain it. So you would need to make sure that you also install just normal libssl in the final image, which I believe is libssl3. So it can be a little bit error prone to match these to get the right uh, library series. That's kind of the other caveat of this. Okay, so I wanted to also talk about why they're a little bit fiddly and I don't tend to use them myself. Uh, and the main reason for this is build performance. Multi-stage images don't usually cache well. Now there is a little thing in BuildKit that makes this just work. Uh, I have not played with it, so I actually can't show you it. <laughs> uh, but in theory, there is a solution to this, which is that it 
it, what it essentially does is it stores the cache image from the um, even from the builder layers without actually pushing it, uh, such that it can regenerate the image at the end. Uh, the old way that you would do this is you would build each each stage of the Docker image separately and tag them separately. So you can imagine I could run. Uh, let's actually put it back to the the fast version, so we don't have to <laughs> we don't have to actually sit through all of the app stuff again. Uh, so what you used to do is you would Docker build uh, dash t image dash builder. Uh, you would use dash dash target, I think. Yeah, so you can see here that uh, it stopped right after, it stopped after just doing the first stage and the first stage was called builder. And then you could use another target to build the final and tag that to whatever. Uh, and then you would push both of those images and use cache from to target both of those. So it's a little bit more work, uh, but it does work. This is the old way. I don't know the new way because I didn't do my research before this. But anyway, so personally, I tend to avoid them just because the the disk savings doesn't necessarily translate to the developer experience savings of having actual uh, build caches. Although I should just learn the new thing because apparently it solves both those problems. Uh, but I think that's all I want to talk about. Uh, if there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.